cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1526. 1525. What? 1525. Yes, it's the second show of 2018. Are we going to still say the and? 2000 and? No, I think we're just saying 2018 now. It's boring. We don't. We got rid of and. We're so prejudiced against and. Hmm. Mike's. Daily podcast. Today we will hear from Bison Bentley Valentino, Madame Rutabaga. I'm here really early at Mike's Daily Podcast Cafe. Anyway, anyway, I have to say I yesterday went to a place called Alameda, Alameda, and I did not have fun, especially because something I had to get done. And that was I had to do my thing, as it were. Mike's Daily Podcast. You got to do what you got to do. No, I had to use... Oh, Kenny Loggins Live in 2017. I'll save that for later. Mike's That looks good. Daily He's going to sing... Podcast. The highway to the Danger Zone. Yeah! I had to use the bathroom so bad. I had to pee. Awesome. Basically. And I couldn't find anywhere... Any any open bathrooms, any public bathrooms. I did finally find one, and there's like a guy living in it. And I was just dying. And I'm walking my dog, Basil the Boxer. And he, luckily, can pee wherever he wants. So, I was very jealous. Look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Masu. It's Madame Rutabaga. What an interesting story. Oh. Yes. That's, it was difficult. Yes, but you're a man. You can pee wherever you want. Ooh. My mom used to say that all the time. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to be a woman. You have to... Look who else walked in. We won't go into specifics. I mean, with the, what I was just talking about. We'll go into specifics now, because you'll say your name. Hello, dear Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And- this is Bison Belly. Happy New Year. Do you know that? Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I hope this year has got some semblance of normalcy and that it's not... Anarchy! I don't even know what that means, but I love it. No anarchy, please. And here's today's podcast picture. So instead of showing a picture of Alameda from yesterday, I'm going to show you a picture from... The Cross the Bay, Jack London Square. When did I take this picture? So I use this thing called Google Photos. And it will upload, it's constantly uploading to Google Photos pictures that are on your phone. And it it gives you unlimited memory because I took this. Oh my gosh, I took it almost a year ago to the day. Wow. January 13th of last year And it is uh, Jack London Square I'm I'm pointing it towards Alameda And there's one of those big cargo ships Ooh, and just up from here You can't see it in the photo But there is the FDR's boat Franklin Delano Roosevelt's boat Called the Potomac Which I did not know As I watched the Roosevelt's yesterday at my other job because I had to work on New Year's Day. I know. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> that the Potomac was used on the East Coast. Actually, the Potomac has a rich history. The boat, uh, the ship. It was at one time owned by uh, Elvis. And then somehow it made its way to the West Coast. It made its way to the, the Bay Area, to the Bay, the San Francisco Bay. And then it sunk. And somebody was, they were just going to leave it. And somebody was able to get it out of the water and make it all nice. I think it's, uh, uh, oh, it's Travel Channel did a thing about it too. But the boat now sits in Alameda, actually Jack London Square. And the boat, apparently the ship, boat, ship, whatever, I'm not nautical. I'm radical. But no, what the thing was that 
And my point being, and that's the catchphrase of the show, FDR, he was really worried. He saw Hitler coming to power and Mussolini, and he was getting really freaked out. And he he knew America didn't want to get into another war because World World War One was horrible. We lost millions of soldiers, and so he said. Yeah, but he knew we had to get into that war at some point because it was getting worse and worse, and Hitler was being a douchebag. And so he said to, uh, uh, to Winston Churchill, "Look, we've been sending correspondence back to back and forth, back and forth. I need to meet you in person, but I can't let the American people know this because they'll freak out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to travel on a U.S. battle destroyer ship over to England." And we'll meet and talk And so But what he did was He sent his his private boat The Potomac Up and down the east coast And people thought that he, he was on that boat He secretly wasn't though It was a ruse And yeah And apparently FDR was all into secrets like that Did you know that when he died As I found out Watching the Roosevelt documentary By Ken Burns that when he died, he was surrounded by four women. Three of them were his mistresses. None of them were Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife. No, she was off at a speech somewhere. So he, that's how he died. And he died of a brain hemorrhage, a cerebral hemorrhage, and died, just was gone. But wow, what a way to go, huh? Surrounded by your mistresses. And Laura Linney, who I'm not a fan of. Oh, what is this doing? Oh, that's good. What I was, I got sidetracked by something here at Cafe anyway. It, that's what happens. And I, then I end up going. I'm taking a breather. Sorry. But what Laura Linney, who I, I'm not the biggest fan of, she kind of, she's not the best actress. She's beautiful, but I'm, just, you know, and she, she got, what was that scene in Love Actually? Where this guy is wanting to be with her, but she can't be with the guy because her brother keeps calling her and she has to go. And this guy apparently is more in love with himself. To, oh my gosh. And uh, Love Actually, this actor was, I think, this is the only thing he ever did, but that was completely unbelievable. I don't know where I'm going with this tangent. Love Actually. Did you see? I had to watch that show. I had to watch that stupid movie so many times. Alan Rickman is in that movie, and he's attempting to cheat on his wife, played by the uh, beautiful actress that used to be married to Kenneth Branagh, but I can't remember her name. So, to sum up, Roosevelt's Potomac, the boat, it's in Jack London Square in that area. And the picture has to do with that. And Alameda has no place to pee. The end. So I don't think I'll be visiting Alameda again anytime soon. I think I'll just... I'll just... Uh, stay away. But, it, it, you know, once in a while it's nice to visit. And on New Year's Day, why not? I'll pop, probably... I got, I got a wonderful picture with Basil the Boxer from that day. <laughs> And I will have to post that picture at some point with ba- that uh, very nice girl took a picture of Basil and I as the sun was setting. So I will feature that picture soon. At any rate, let's get to there's a, one new story I wanted to hit here, and that is Donald Trump. And and of course, we talk about Donald Trump on the show. And he says things like, should I sign it? And that this is a fine tuned machine. And he knows what's good. and bad. I know what's good and bad. Donald Trump took America and the world on a wild ride last year. It was like Mr. Toad's wild ride, where in the end of the, sh- the ride, you end up in hell. That's the, a Disneyland ride. I used to love riding that ride as a kid. They've had it a long time. Wow, this year I'm turning 50. Yeah, not till the end of the year, so don't make any jokes yet. But yeah, looking forward to that. So... This CNN article talks about Donald Trump 
and about the new year bringing deepening crisis, confrontations, and events that could shake Washington to its core and trigger shockwaves that will test America's unity, global peace, and the cohesion of the Trump presidency itself. Special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation could come to fruition in 2018, and any wrongdoings that he finds by Trump or close associates could cause a constitutional imbroglio. Brolio Oh A raviolio Abroad North Korea A brewing showdown for 65 years Across the world's last Cold front front, Cold war frontier Is reviving fears of nuclear war And one particular date Looms on the calendar calendar, That's November 6th According to CNN These are the important things when we are going to be having an election in on November sixth, and what the hell will happen then? Will Trump uh, prevail? Will his candidates prevail, or will it be? And that's how it goes. It's America. That's what we do. We worry about stupid stuff. If you want to CNN, if you want to read that. Oh hey, uh, Hoda, Hoda is going to be on NBC's Today. Uh, permanently replacing the Matt Lauer Who got Lowered And Oh Okay I think that's Is there any interesting tech news maybe Oh there's some tech trends In 2018 Blockchain Oh yeah blockchain's gonna get bigger The Bitcoin Dropped pretty bad By the end of the year It dropped pretty bad Wow now I'm slurring like Trump The United States Uh Bitcoin towards the end of the year it it dropped but the technology behind it people are saying is going to continue to get it's a it's a really secure way uh, and according to this article by the next web the use the uses of blockchain are essentially limitless artificial intelligence is going to get bigger augmented reality voice assistants oh boy yeah voice assistants already in 2017 were all over the place remember it all started back with the Michael Knight and when he talked to or was did it go before that did it go back to lost in space danger will robinson danger computer what is the consistency of the planet's air quality below and Star Trek and all that stuff was probably where it but they will get bigger and there's a way to listen to this podcast if you say to Alexa uh, Alexa open Spreaker the Spreaker app and then you can once you're in the Spreaker app open up Mike's Daily Podcast to listen to it apparently and I think on iTunes or, or there's other ways basically you open whatever podcast App you typically use if you have it linked to your Amazon. Ah, that's. But if you want to listen to the show other places than where you are listening to it now, you can go to mikesdailypodcast.com. All the links to all the places you can listen to the show. So many places. I ran through some of them on the last show. But yes, and if you want to see the podcast picture from today, that's at mikesdailypodcast.com. I don't know if I'm going I'm to be doing a show tomorrow because honestly, I've, I'm kind of feeling the chills today. I'm kind of feeling like I'm getting a little, and I'm, I'm hedging that. I know I should just say bold statements and say, I am sick. But right now, I don't know. It could go either way. I could be nice and fit as a fiddle tomorrow. But we'll see. So the Internet of Things, I hate that term. Internet of Things. That's just such a... What does that mean? But basically, it's the Internet inside of things that we own. Like refrigerators and thermostats. Apparently, that's going to be big this year. The technological breakthroughs with smart home devices and the assimilation of mobile devices... In the processes of the home Snowballed in 2017 The whole idea Behind the internet of things Is that it's a seamless integration of technology In daily life And apparently we'll continue to see that The shift from the cloud To edge computing What? What does this mean? 
The next web says, recently we've been hearing that data transfer goes through the cloud and cloud services have dominated data transfer since their popularization by the major tech companies. However, edge computing holds a greater potential. According to IEEE, Internet of Things Journal, cloud computing can transfer large amounts of data, but heavy usage can result in a bottleneck effect, which hinders the speed uh, for the user. Cloud computing will still be heavily used in 2018 because it can efficiently move large amounts of data, but the bandwidth for edge will enable the Internet of Things to grow more effectively with it. Now I'm lost. I don't know what they're saying here. So whatever. Cafe whatever. I mean, cafe anyway. Edge computing, huh? Anyway. Cybersecurity, of course, will be bigger and hopefully better because it was bad last year. All those credit breaches and stuff. And the cost of the internet. Ah, yes, that will be a thing in 2018. With net neutrality being dead, this will probably affect your access to the internet. While the elimination... Of net neutrality could result in the changing of data rates by providers. The potential costs imposed could fluctuate depending on how much the competition drives down prices. The shift in regulation will change how much larger data transfer outlets will cost users. But the panic that spread after the decision is not completely justified since the providers will need to find a way to set prices to match competition. However, the elimination of net neutrality will certainly have an effect on the price of data transfer. And then, of course... Pot is going to be used by everybody in California, so no one will know how to use the internet. And that's how things will go. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. I canceled my Netflix yesterday. As of today, I no longer have Netflix, which is completely fine with me because I do not even freaking care. I hate Netflix now. There was no... Oh, and then a guy I work with at my other job, he's Hey, uh, everybody's got to have Netflix, don't you know? It's like that gym membership that you have that you never use. No, I'm done. I I will not. So five dollar footlongs are four ninety nine each. Wait, is that the big news? That Subway has. Oh, I went to their. Me- you know, there's. Isn't it weird how Subway is everywhere? And Subway apparently not doing so well in the food industry as we wrap up the show. Um, The sandwich chain's U.S. stores, U.S. store count dropped apparently by um, more than 900 last year. Almost three times as many locations that closed the year before. To To fix the problem, the chain is designing and remodeling its franchise stores. And they got this deal going on. A homeless man died after... Oh, wow. This, this guy is According to story. Business Insider, the sandwich chain's U.S. store count dropped by more than 900 in 2017, almost three times as many locations that closed the year before. I think I told that exact same story. I thought I told it better. But a guy was hit by a subway. That was the other story that's sad. Yes. Um, and... There... Well... I have stopped eating at Subway because in Alabama, there was a gas station slash slash Subway store not too far away from where I worked for Cumulus Radio. And I would walk over there to try and you know, get something to eat. And when I would walk in there, they could smoke in this Subway. And it stunk so bad of cigarettes and bad luncheon meat. Ugh. So, from that point on, I never wanted to eat at Subway again. But hey, they got a big foot-long deal going on right now, so whatever. But uh, what I was hearing, I heard in another story that they're losing so much money with that. Trying to... the the What it costs to make a sandwich and what they're charging, it apparently is not good for the bottom line. But you know what? I don't care, because this bottom line is we're outside, and it's beautiful, and I've got the chills, and I hope... Next show, I'm able to show up for the next show and bring you a next show. Because without me, there is no next show. So hopefully I'll have a next show for you. And uh, hopefully you have a great day.
Thank you for listening. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com is the place to go. The website, you can contact me there. Uh, you can call me at 336-MM-DAILY. You can email me, Mike'sDailyPodcast at gmail.com. And you can see all the past podcast pictures. Enjoy your day. Awesome. Next show, it'll be Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.